Hello insiders, my name is Alina, I'm a product specialist working on YouTube analytics and today I'm excited to speak to Dan and to know more about improvements we're making on audience retention card and key moments. Welcome Dan. Thanks Alina and hello insiders. My name is Dan and I'm a UX designer on the YouTube analytics team. So Dan, tell us a bit more. What is changing in YouTube analytics retention card? Yeah, so if you'll remember last year when we chatted, we were introducing key moments for audience retention. The key moments being uh, intros, continuous segments, spikes, and dips. And we heard from creators that those were really helpful in finding out what was resonating with their viewers and what was working in terms of their content. One of the pieces of feedback we heard is that as creators make changes in response to those findings, it would be helpful to know what's good and what's bad for retention. So we've heard that and we've responded by adding typical audience retention. Um, so for those who have used analytics before, it's a pattern we see across various charts in analytics where we have a gray band and we've added that to audience retention. Additionally, we've added support for chapters. So now you can see annotations of where your chapters are in your videos if you've added those. And we're celebrating top moments. So we heard that continuous segments wasn't always a clear name. So we've tweaked the definition um, to better be inclusive of what we see are as really successful, engaging moments of content and added a little banner of recognition for those and celebrating creators. Uh, so how do we actually calculate typical uh, retention? Great question. So typical retention is based on videos of similar length published on a creator's channel within the last year. And in the future, we plan to add the comparison of not just a creator's own channel, but to other videos of similar length from across channels. Can you give us an example? Absolutely. So I'm here on the Creator Insider Studio and scrolling down, I'm just gonna pick a video here by Rachel, check out the analytics for it. And if I scroll down, I can see key moments for audience retention. And right away, because of that typical performance band that I talked about, I can see, wow, this video absolutely crushed it with above typical retention the entire time. I can also see those spikes near the chapters, which I talked about. Um, going over to the top moment, I can see a little congratulatory badge. And I can also see that almost the entire portion of this video is classified as a top moment because of that above typical retention throughout. So. That's great. From here, we've also linked to the channel key moments page. And this is where we really think the potential lies because you can see across your videos. And right away, you can see another improvement that we've made, which is adding above typical and below typical. Previously, we just showed the last 10 videos. Now we've taken the last 30 videos and we're, sh we're showing that side-by-side -side comparison. And hopefully that helps illuminate what's really working well and what's maybe not when it comes to intros. So finally wrapping up with one case study of how we might actually use this, I'll go to the spikes tab, check out this video. And here I can select this point and see, I can play it up. Oh, there's a UI demo. And then if I look, this one isn't officially a spike, but if I go over there, there's another UI demo. So those moments, it would seem, are resonating with my audience and working well. Getting meta about it, in this video that we're making right now, because this is a UI demo, it's probably going to be the most successful moment within the video in terms of retention and engagement. Back to you, Alina. Okay, thanks, Dan. Uh, and if you have any questions or feedback, leave them below and keep it real.